self-propelled artillery keep the guns up with the advancing troops. This is crucial to maintaining fire support in mobile mechanised warfare. NATO forces rely on the venerable M109 howitzer, a gun system introduced during the Vietnam War that continues in service today. Battlefront have released a plastic M109 to replace their earlier resin and metal version. Join me as we have a look inside the box. This is the Battlefront M109 Artillery Battery box set for Team Yankee. As you can see from the line of flags on the box, this weapon system is usable with a slew of different nations in the game. Mechanised warfare necessitates more mobile support units, and many militaries developed vehicle-mounted mobile artillery to replace towed guns. The US military fielded several systems, but the M109 series arose from a program to adopt a common chassis for several calibre of gun. The M108 mounted a light 105mm howitzer and saw service in the Vietnam War. Australian forces leased three of these systems from the US Army until the introduction of an indigenously designed fire support system. The M109 was the medium calibre version of the system. It mounted the M126 155mm howitzer on the same chassis as the M108. These early versions are recognisable by the short barrel with a large collar-like bore evacuator. M109 has a large crew, usually 6 to 10 men, with a gunner, commander and driver as well as a number of loaders and ammunition handlers. The gun is mounted in a fully traversable turret. The M109A1 increased its effective range to 18 kilometres by fitting the M185 155mm gun. This gun has a longer barrel fitted with a smaller bore evacuator. A variety of ammunition types can be fired, from simple high explosive through to tactical nuclear shells. These include the copperhead guided anti-armour round, rocket assisted rounds for greater range, scatterable minefields and DPICM dual purpose cluster munitions. Constant upgrades have kept the M109 in service, with an autoloader system planned for the US M109A7 in 2024. If we look at the back of the box, there's an image of a completed M109 and an exploded assembly diagram. Parts count is 17 parts, and assembly looks pretty straightforward. Looking closer, there are a couple of options shown here. However, there are additional options on the sprues not covered in the assembly diagram. We'll talk about those when we get to the plastic. The box set includes three plastic M109 self-propelled guns, one minefield marker and eight unit cards. The number of cards included shows just how widely the M109 was exported, being used by seven nations covered in Team Yankee so far. There are no commander figures or decals supplied. Let's look at the plastic. Each M109 comes on a single sprue of green plastic. Parts seem well cast and detail is sharp and well defined. Before we go in closer to look at individual parts, let's look at the main gun options. If you want to build the M108 version for NAM, here's the M103 105mm howitzer. This gun is used with this trunnion piece and should use the flat unarmoured sight cover. Early M109s use this short M125 155mm howitzer with the distinctive bore evacuator. This is used with this different trunnion piece. There's probably a way to magnetise this piece to switch between M108 and M109 if you want to. The short barrel M109 should also use the unarmoured sight cover. The instructions only list this variant for the West German M109G but the US and British also use this version of the gun if you feel like modelling something a bit different. The longer gun is the M185 155mm howitzer. This was used with the M109A1 model and beyond. It also uses the same trunnion as the shorter 155mm gun. This version can use either the unarmoured sight cover or the raised armoured version highlighted here. The M109A1 featured a bigger turret bustle which is glued in between the stowage racks at the rear. 
don't use this piece if you build any of the other versions of this vehicle. Here's the upper hull. There's plenty of good moulded on detail here, particularly the grills on the engine deck. This should look great when painted and dry brushed. When firing, M109 uses spades to absorb some of the gun's recoil. These are clearly shown on the hull rear part. The spades are moulded directly onto the hull, so you can't model them in the deployed position. Not an unexpected design choice for a wargaming kit. The tracks are single piece parts which also include the hull sides. As has become fairly standard practice with battlefront kits, major joins are present on upper hull edges. Make sure to dry fit and apply pressure during assembly to minimise gaps. You can clearly see the detail in the road wheels and tracks here. The upper turret part also has plenty of detail moulded on. This includes tools and tow cables as well as surveyor's posts used to position and sight the guns. Beyond this part you can see the MG3 machine gun for the commander's position. This is for the West German version. Other nationalities use the M2 50 caliber Browning machine gun. So that's the parts and options for the Battlefront Plastic M109 kit. It's nice to have this kit available in plastic. It's much more affordable than the older resin and metal kit. It also has more options and variants you can build. The level of detail and quality of the moulding is well up to Battlefront's usual standard. I did end up with some gaps in my hull during assembly. This turned out to be from the hull rear piece forcing the track and side pieces slightly away from the rest of the hull. A bit more dry fitting and sanding would avoid this. I'll know to do this when I assemble the rest of the kits in the box. Let's look at using the M109 on the table in Team Yankee. There are 8 unit cards for many nationalities included in this kit. I'm going to use the US Army card for this video, but the cards from other nations are broadly similar. M109 is a tank unit with the bomblets, laser guided projectiles and minelets special rules. The bomblets are an add-on you can equip your M109s with for an additional 1 point per battery. This allows the battery to make salvo attack bombardments with anti-tank 3 and firepower of 6. Bomblets are cluster munitions which have a mix of small anti-tank and anti-personnel bombs which scatter over a wide area. You can also pay to add copperhead rounds to the M109s. Adding this means your M109s may fire copperhead laser guided anti-tank projectiles instead of a bombardment. Copperhead has a minimum range of 16 inches or 40 centimeters. Anti-tank 21 with a 2 plus firepower. It also has the brutal, guided and heat special rules. Minelets add scatterable minefields to your battery for plus one point for the battery. Once per game, a battery equipped with minelets can fire scatterable mines instead of a bombardment. The US Army's M109's Courage, Skill, Morale and Remount are all 4+. Plus. US Marine crews are a bit better with Courage and Remount of 3+. Plus. This will give bailed out marine vehicles an improved chance to remount before making a unit morale test. Assault and counter attack are 5 plus. This is better than I was expecting, as these definitely aren't assault troops, but it does give them a chance. M109s are hit on a 4 plus. Armour is 2 on the front and sides and top 1. Not a lot of armour, but protection against shell splinters and small arms fire. Tactical move is 10 inches or 25 centimetres, with a terrain dash of 16 inches or 40 centimetres. Cross is a 3 plus, so maybe steer clear of difficult terrain if you can. The M185 155mm howitzer stat line has a bombardment range of 96 inches or 240 centimetres. On most gaming tables, that's a lot of reach. Anti tank is 4 with a 2 plus firepower. It can also do a smoke bombardment. Direct fire the gun has a 36 inch or 90 centimeter range with a moving and halted rate of fire 1. This medium howitzer is not designed for rapid fire like a tank gun. It gets the slow firing rule which means an additional plus 1 penalty to fire if the unit moved during its movement step. Other rules are brutal which sees infantry and unarmored tank teams re-rolling successful saves as well as smoke. M109s can direct fire smoke at oncoming targets if they need to. 
AT is 15 with a 1 plus firepower. If you hit anything other than a tank with direct fire with this gun, it will know all about it. The other stat line is for the 50 caliber AA machine gun. This has a 20 inch or 50 centimeter range. Rate of fire is 3 halted or moving of 2, AT4 and 5 plus firepower. Other countries might have different ratings here, like the MG3 for the West Germans. M109 is usually a support option. In the Bannon Boys list here you can choose the M109 field artillery battery. Your options are 3 M109s for 7 points or a 6 gun battery for 14 points. There are additional options here. You can arm all guns in the battery with either bomblets or minelets for one additional point. You can choose to take both options. Copperhead guided anti-tank projectiles are more expensive at an additional one point for each gun in the battery. That's an additional three points or six points for the unit depending on the size battery you chose. Note that as well as the cost of adding Copperhead to the battery, you'll need an observer team like a fist. They have the special laser designator sights to guide the rounds onto their target. If the specialist observer team is destroyed, the battery can't fire guided projectiles. There's a lot of rules clarification for using guided projectiles in the special ammunition section on page 5 of FM 101. If you get a big battery and add in all the fruit, it can be a costly addition. It comes out at 22 points, 23 if you add in the cost of the fist observer team. That's a lot of points to tie up in one support unit. You really need to decide what add-ons you need for your game plan when building your list. So that's the 15mm plastic M109 kit from Battlefront for Team Yankee. It's a nice kit with some interesting options to make a few variants including the M108 for NAM. Keep in mind the different parts for the different variants you can build, and make sure to dry fit and sand the hull parts during assembly. Having a plastic kit available to replace the resin version is great, and because it's used by so many nations a lot of players will be happy there's now a cheaper alternative. Of course if you've bought lots of the resin ones already, tough luck I guess, you can commiserate with the Warsaw Pact players who bought lots of resin T-55s. Artillery and repeat bombardment are one of the big changes in 2nd edition that will make these units even more effective. Bomblets and minelets are cheap additions if you want to funnel the enemy around terrain or drop big salvos. However, the extra cost of Copperhead would mean it really needs to be a cornerstone of your battle plan to be worth it. But these are a good solid performer and a nice kit. What forces do you plan to use M109 with? Are you going to paint them to suit a couple of different armies? Have you had a lot of success with Copperhead? Let us know in the comments. If you're enjoying Fog of War content, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell so you don't miss out on new videos. See you next time.